Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Historical Commission meeting. It is Tuesday, December 21st, and it's 534. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Can I please get a roll call? Uh, Joyce Rodericks. Present. Connie Soule. Present. Ruben Amaral. Present. Richard Mancini. Present via Zoom. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira, present uh, virtually. And everyone is attending virtually tonight by Zoom. We do also have two open seats on the board. Um, we had no citizen input this evening. Connie, you're on mute. I, I know you're talking, but you're on mute. I wanted to make a motion to take out of order correspondence A and B, um, move it up on the agenda before we do minutes. Okay, oh, A is minutes. not here. Do, what, actually, do you want to do five, uh, five D is actually, I think, first. Did I, do I have the wrong? Yeah, you have six B would be Michael. Oh, okay. yeah, and five, five D is Liberty Utilities. I know they are here. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do. Most oh, okay. I, I, I don't know if I have the right agenda. But anyways, I did want to move it up. Um, my time is limited tonight. And so I wanted to make sure we heard the people that are present. Okay, so Connie is making a motion to move uh, 5D 45 Anawan Street Liberty Utilities to the beginning now out of order. Do I have a second? Yes, I'll second that. Okay, we'll do a uh, roll call vote. Joyce Rodericks. I, I agree. Okay, Connie Soul. Yes. Ruben Amaral. You're on mute, Ruben. Aye. Uh, Richard Mancini. Yes. And Kristen Cantera Oliveri. Yes. Um, so we did receive a letter um, from Liberty Utilities about 45 Anawan Street, and they want to um, demo two. Um, two structures on the property and the property itself, the whole entire complex of 45 Anawan Street is on the significant structures list. So I know we do have someone here that's a representative. So if um, if you'd like to introduce yourself and just um, let us know what it is that you're, you're not sure. I did send it, I did send it around to everybody. So we are aware. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll be as brief as you need me to, but you know, if you're not getting the information that you want, please ask questions. Um, my name is Derek Tomka. I'm the Senior Director of Environmental Compliance with Liberty. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a bit of a cough, so I appreciate you making the this meeting a Zoom meeting so I can still participate. Um, the, the property that we're looking at was first developed by the, the Fall River Gas Works Company in 1880, and they burned um, coal to create coal gas, which was then um, the gas that came off of the burnt coal gas was collected and scrubbed and purified and was stored and then was was distributed out to the to customers um, for um, town gas, lighting gas, heating. Um, and the this facility was used to make coal gas until about 1945 when the manufacturing operations were, went somewhere else. Um, however, this property has been within um, the gas company's prop or the, the gas company's operation system um, since since 1880. Um, the, as you can imagine, the uh, the coal gasification process was a dirty process that <clears throat> pre-existed the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, and it was a, a dirty process. 
in 2008, the gas company started doing some environmental investigations at the property and ended up reporting the environmental conditions to DEP. And since then, we've been working through DEP's Massachusetts contingency plan on um, a risk-based closure. And part of that work is to remove um, contaminated soil and some source material in the subsurface environment um, from some old historic structures that, that exist below the asphalt and below the, the garage building. Um, so we've been, <clears throat> excuse me, we've been investigating the property for a good number of years. And over the, the past year, we've gone through bitter selection and just recently awarded the work to our remediation contractor who was um, just recently in touch with the building inspector to get the building permit. And that was when we were made aware of the, the listing on the significant structure list. So you can add, imagine my surprise when uh, I'm looking at this concrete block building that was uh, on, on slab um, with a corrugated metal roof and trying to understand why that would be listed as a significant structure. So Chris, I, I appreciate you explaining that um, this building is just guilty by association for being on this, this property. Right. We, we actually, there's um, a few different things in the city that are, especially around mills and things like that, they're listed together as a complex. And then you have structures that are contributing and non-contributing. And from when I looked at it, they look like they would be non-contributing structures because I did, um, I did look at them and I sent it around to everybody else. Um, so that's the whole, the whole point is just, we need to vote to see whether or not, because normally anything on the property would have a six month demolition delay. And as long as the, um, as long as the commission finds that there's no reason to do that, then we can just, you know, we can vote either way. And that was, that was the point of, of having you come in case, in case anybody has any questions. Sure. About it. Yeah, I can, I can uh, share some photos. Um, I think we sent one over. We have a few more that I could share if that might be helpful. Um, <clears throat> and then, I'm sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, I, I, I did send the photos to everybody. So I'm just gonna say, just so that we don't make you keep talking because I know you're not feeling well. Does anybody on the board have any questions about the two structures that they wanna demo? I just have a question about cleanup. Is it? <laughs> The responsibility now of the gas company to clean up the area before demolition or after demolition? Yes, like the, the gas company has a notice of responsibility from DEP. So that's the work that we're doing towards remediation. So that yes, the gas company is doing that work. Uh, Derek, and, is it to the degree- and will the area um, be able to be used by a commercial venture? of some kind or would it be yep. apparently <clears throat> a hazardous area or a brownfield? Uh, the, the closure strategy that we're moving towards is there will be restrictions on what it can be used for. Um, so, you know, we don't wanna see a, a daycare center um, occupy the structure. Um, however, for commercial establishments, industrial establishments, parking lots, all of that is, uh, is fine. Um, this, this property will have a, an activity and use limitation placed on it after the, the cleanup is completed, which will list the activities that are consistent with the, the AUL or the activity and use limitation. And then if, um, if a future owner wanted to change that activity, they would simply need to evaluate, um, the new act or the proposed activity in the context of, um, the environmental situ or the conditions at the site to see if there is no unacceptable risk. So, <clears throat> um, and speaking more directly to, to your question, I think is the, the gas company has entered into a purchase and sales agreement with the Fall River Redevelopment Authority. Um, and they have expressed interest in acquiring this property. Um, they're, they're aware of the activity and use limitation that will be in, in place after the remediation. Um, and then ultimately it, it will be their, their decision what the property is ultimately used for in the future. Derek, is Thank the you. removal of 
soil going to be limited? Is that what's going to be part of your restrictions? Are you, are you removing a limited amount of soil in order to eliminate contamination? Yeah, what we've found at, <clears throat> at this facility is there's four structures that have the bulk of the, um, the contaminated soil in it. Um, two of them are old gas holders um, that straddle the, the front wall of that, um, that garage building. And then uh, there's another one in the, the kind of center of the parking area. And then there's another structure that is uh, just inside the garage building. Mm -hmm. So we, we think we're fortunate here that we can actually remove the contents of the structure without having to do a lot of extra excavation. Um, so it, we don't think it's going to be an extensive, um, an extensive dig and that the, the, our, our excavation limits are really confined just by virtue of the structures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion either way? Uh, the motion is to what? To a lift the restriction, the six month restriction. Yes, on the t on the two property on the two structures that they are looking to demo. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay. Well, I haven't made it yet. He hasn't made it yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I I would uh, Derek. I, I would just it, 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 just if you could, and if and, and if if it's handy paperwork that you have. I can make the motion that we lift the restriction, the six month restriction from your project. But could you ship us maybe what level of restrictions are going to be placed on the property? Would that be possible? Just send it to Kristen and she can <clears throat> try and get it out to us. Yeah, we, I can share um, what we've submitted as a draft notice of activity and use limitation that we shared it with uh, the RDA when we were negotiating the sales agreement. Yeah, I, that would be much appreciated. It's just for some general knowledge that I yep. can store in this uh, aged mind. Okay. <laughs> sure, no problem. All right, Joyce, you can now second. I'll second that motion, Rick. Okay, so I have a motion and a second to waive the six month demolition delay on those two structures. So roll call, Joyce Rogers. Aye. Connie Soule? Yes. Ruben Amaral? Aye. Richard Mancini? Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira vote yes. So that is unanimous. So I will, um, I'll get a letter to you to wa waiving the six month demolition delay. And I'll also send a copy to the building department. Okay, that, okay. that's wonderful. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> can you tell me roughly when you expect that? My contractor is already breathing down my back and wants to wants to start the process as quickly as possible. I can hope to do it in the next couple of days. The thing is we we all work yep. full time and then Christmas is in the next couple of days. So the the latest I would have it to you would be early next week. Okay. It just it, it shouldn't it, hopefully I can get it done tomorrow at some point. Okay. okay. Yep, anything you can do to to move it along would be appreciated. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank All you very right. much. And I'll send over the draft AUL. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to drop now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Getting back to our agenda. Well, well we're moving now um, to Sorry, I keep losing it. I'm out of my element here. I had motioned to have him D first and then. I think you're at 6B. 6B. Okay, so I have a motion to move 6B up out of order next, which would be um, Michael Labasia. Do I have a second? Let's second, second that motion. That motion. Sure, okay. I'll second. So I have a motion in three seconds. Oh, <laughs> okay. So roll call vote, uh, vote Joyce Rodericks. Aye. Connie Sewell. Yes. 
Okay, Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveri. Yes. So uh, we will uh, move. So uh, Mike Lavassier, and he is presenting requesting letters of support for Community Preservation Committee applications um, on behalf of the Fall River Department of Community Utilities. So he has three. Uh, Mike, you're muted. He has three projects that he submitted for. He's looking for letters of support for uh, the Bonobus Blossom Workshop, the Interlochen Cultural Resource Stabilization Project, and the North Wartupa Pond Seawalls Condition Assessment and Restoration Plan. Uh, does anybody, would anybody like to start? Well, I can start by thanking the committee, uh, the commission for uh, allowing me to uh, <clears throat> present this request again. Um, we, all three of these applications uh, were before the CPC last year. Um, they didn't rank highly enough to get funded, all three of them. I, I don't think it was necessarily uh, you know, due to their merits, because I think all three are very good. I, I think you, you have before you all three eligibility applications for this particular fiscal year. So we were encouraged to, um, you know, the, 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 the committee um, sort of had a different mandate last year, and I think they addressed that, and uh, we were encouraged to resubmit, and so that's our plan. We, uh, all three of these passed the first eligibility round again. And um, last time, uh, we were very grateful that you wrote letters of support for each one of these three. And, um, you know, you, uh, we simply want to um, ask once again that the commission would, um, would look at these, view them as, um, you know, worthwhile projects, and um, you would support them based on their, particularly on, on their, uh, their, their somewhat um, mixed projects. I mean, they they all have a historical element, but um, each one has has a little bit more than that. So um, I know you have these applications before you. You've probably reviewed them, but I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions relating to them. And um, uh, each one, I think, is really exciting. So uh, um, if you know, fire away if you have any questions. Okay. Mike, are you going to be the charge person for these projects? Yeah, so um, it's a really good question. So my my purview um, as the forester for the Watepa Reservation has continued to creep as jobs in the city tend to do. Um, so I'm I'm basically now project manager, but all of these are relevant to the Watupper Reservation and, um, you know, sync up with some aspect. The Barnabas Blossom House, for example, or I should say the, Blon the Barnabas Blossom Workshop um, is associated with the uh, uh, half a dozen or so buildings at the Watupper Reservation headquarters. And that headquarters has actually been dedicated to the old Blossom Farm that's been dedicated for uh, operations since uh, 1911. Um, so that's, that's basically where my entire operation uh, works out of. Um, the other two projects, Interlochen, of course, is, is within the Watupper Reservation. And the seawall project, really, those seawalls um, sort of um, are constructed along the perimeter of North Watupper, which, which is surrounded by the reservation. So by virtue of all three of those, um, these are my projects because they're all you know, directly involved with the Watupper Reservation. Okay. Uh, do you report to a board at all, Mike? Just I'm just sort of curious as to your as your structure. Yeah. So, um, the you know the department of the department of community utilities actually um, falls under two boards. Is this there's the the the, the sewer depart the sewer division, and then there's the uh, the water division. Water division is under the Watupa Water Board, and that's a that's a three member uh, uh, commission. Okay, so that's that's the oversight board for these three projects. Correct. Okay. Has uh, there been any um, talk about funding other than CPC? Is there any funding that might have come from the federal government during this uh, pandemic? Has that been a possibility, or is it it's strictly CPC? 
um, um, I would say pre the precise answer for that is strictly CPC at this point. This this project and the funding, the budget work, and all of that really preceded the pandemic, um, so it really hasn't changed. I will say that um, you know there's there's an element of the funding that we always assume that we will provide, whether it's the in-kind uh, you know, services of, of, of staff, or um, whether it's some additional cash funding. Um, you know, we don't have a very great, you know, a very big budget and, and none of these are sort of under any kind of capital budget allowance. But in particular, the Barnabas Blossom, we've had a, a, a number of years uh, standing partnership with Diamond and um, they will be they will figure prominently in sort of a like kind um uh you know service <clears throat> match if you will um haven't really you know worked out what that value is um but they have contributed tens of thousands of dollars in value with um working on a number of other projects at the reservation um including you know new hvac system uh, you know, new, entirely new wiring, um, you know, shingling of the four stall garage, you know, new windows, uh, um, just on and on. So that's, that's not a small um, contribution. And also it's, it's a really vital partnership that we've, that we've forged with, uh, with Diamond and we're really happy about it. So I, I just want to express my concerns and it is not about the projects necessarily. I think they are very good projects. My concern is that the name listed on the projects is Paul Furland. And Paul Furland is not here to answer questions, even though he knows that the commission had some concerns. Um, and we did want to speak with him. And this is the third meeting that he is not attending. And um, my, my concern is seeing that he has the ultimate oversight on these projects because his name is on them. Um, I, my, my concern, I, I can't speak for everybody on the board, is that he has not, um, I guess, been what I would consider a an advocate for historic preservation in the project that is being done up at the waterworks complex as the entire complex is on the um, state national and city register and they are they have clear cut the land and they are putting up a modern building and I did speak with the architect and asked that Mr that I have Mr. Furlan contact me so that the Historical Commission can be part of the discussion about putting up a modern building on a historic complex. So my concern is that since he has the ultimate oversight of these projects, he is not going to really see um, the full significance and value of historic preservation on these projects. Um, I, I don't know how anybody else feels, but that is how I feel. And I feel that he is asking for letters of support from the Historical Commission, but he is not being respectful to the Historical Commission by not coming to our meetings to answer the questions that we have for him. So I, I might respond by saying, um, you know, and I, I, I hear your, your, your concern about that. Um, as I said, these these are these are projects under my immediate purview. Um, obviously, he's the department head, um, but um, my 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 view at this time is that you know I would hope that these projects could be looked at, um, you know, on the basis of their merits alone. And you know, it sounds like there are other um, you know concerns that um, maybe you know. Can, can be addressed, but separately. Um, these these projects, you know, and I would I would point to our good track record with the CPC 
on almost a million dollars of other land conservation projects. So for us, this is a first for getting really involved, for us meaning, you know, the, the, the Watupper Reservation and, um, you know, the, the land conservation work that, 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 that we do out there. Um, these projects support that. They are, you know, they're really in that wheelhouse. And, um, you know, for that reason, um, I would just hope that we could, um, you know, see that those those can be supported. And, um, you know, I, I see your point. Um, and I, I would just hope that those could be those could be dealt with separately. You know, I, I'm I'm on I'm on the fence. I'm a little in, more in favor of the letter, but I I've been on a fence for a while with this. But again, on a one to ten, ten being the best, I'm probably a six right now. Convince me to put me up at eight or nine uh, for this letter. I know we we did assign uh, the letter last time. With with uh, uh, very happy to do that because these projects are and they truly are good projects that need to be taken care of. There's no question in my mind uh, that, they, that they're really good projects. Uh, and the statement that, that I just overheard is we have to look at monies that were accumulated and, and spent on projects in the past. But if you, if you use that analogy, we also know what has happened on Stonehaven Road and Bedford Street and that again is saying is there a change in your administration stinking uh make me feel real comfortable mike that you're the man that's going to be grabbing this project these three projects and running with them and that we're real comfortable that there'll be no outside influences well so if you look at the you know, the, the organization chart of the water department, um, there are several, um, you know, s several branches. Uh, there's maintenance, there's administration, and there's treatment and resources. Treatment and resources, if you will, is, is sort of the third of the three legs of the, of the water department. Treatment has to do with the water treatment plant, um, and resources is, you know, we have a um, half a dozen dams in, in a half a dozen different towns. We have um, you know, two reservoirs, <clears throat> and we have almost 5,000 acres of, of forest land with partners in the bioreserve. That is all my domain. And um, uh, except for the treatment plant, which of course, you know, has its own director, but um, that's a separate division from maintenance and maintenance is involved with the distribution system underground in the city, your hydrants, the water, 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 um, the water services, uh, the maintenance building, the street, you know, Bedford Street and, and uh, you know, those facilities up there. That's a separate division. Um, and then administration has to do with, you know, billing and, and, uh, and metering and all that. So, um, um, you know, I think our divisions integrate to a point, but there's also a firewall in terms of um, the direct line of administration. So I'm really comfortable in saying, I have, um, you know, these are my projects, uh, they're, they're not, really subject to, um, you know, influence or diversion. Um, and I think, as I said, if you look at the conservation work that we've done over the last five years, <clears throat> um, we've, we've acquired eight different, you know, conservation parcels. And then from soup to nuts, um, as Kristen knows, you know, involved with working with state partners, working uh, to put conservation restrictions, was a, which is a secondary overlay of protection on each one of those. And not just with one, partner we've we've worked with you know we've had independent conservation restrictions with um the division of fishing uh the department of fishing game um dcr which is department of conservation and recreation and with the buzzes bay coalition so um you know we've the experience that we've had in our division is um you know is is very strong and um I, you know i think that's that's our mo um, we do our projects very thoroughly. Um, I think they have strong leadership. We have strong partners. Um, we complete them uh, and we complete them, um, you know, very acutely. And, um, I, and I think to, um, uh, you know, to, I, I think a lot of, you know, a number of people um, 
are, I, I think the city is really has benefited greatly from that. And I think I would stand by the fact that that's the way we're going to proceed with every one of these projects. Madam Chairman, I, I would uh, offer a suggestion. I don't know if this is usual or, or not, but would a letter of support be written with a via to Mr. Furlan, who would be asked in that letter to attach an endorsement? Uh, and then that letter could be forwarded on to CPC. Uh, if that is something that we've done in the past or not done, um, but I would, I would think we could get around this um, and also indicate to Mr. Furlan that his support is necessary. Well, he, he, his name is the name that's on the application. It's submitted under Mr. Furlan's name. So he's well aware of the project because the past two years when they came before us, he attended the meetings with Mr. Lavoisier, he is not attending the meetings this year. And I don't know why, but I, I do know that I have tried to get in contact with him. And he did not respond to the email that I sent inviting him to the meeting with the Zoom things. And he did not respond via the message I sent by his architect to the questions that we had regarding another issue that's on our agenda later on, which is 1620 Bedford Street. So I don't know why this time he is not responding, um, but it is there's no, he doesn't need to sign an endorsement for the projects. His name is on the projects. So um, I don't know, Connie. Did you have anything? I know I know your time is limited. So did you have anything that you wanted to add? Or no, I think you anything? captured um, of my thoughts. Ruben? Uh, you know, Rick did a good job uh, asking questions I was going to ask. And I feel like if Mr. Furlan uh, is going to be involved in this project, uh, it's upsetting that he's not here right now. But if he's going to take the back seat and allow you to handle these three very important projects, then um, I would feel comfortable approving the letter. But uh, again, it's going to be a board decision, and uh, Mr. Fernland not being here is upsetting, but it is what it is. So just so you all are aware, too, um, there would be a, and a, a, the, the one thing that makes me a little more comfortable um, is there would be a historic preservation restriction put on all of these three um, project. So interlocking would have a preservation restriction on it. And it would be a 30, usually they do a 30 year restriction. So um, it would, it would have to be maintained and historic, um, you know, it, it, there couldn't be any demo, nothing could happen to it for 30 years. So on interlocking on the walls, and on um, Barnabas Blossom. So they would all three have preservation restrictions put on them. It's just, I know that my other concern, part of the walls, um, while it goes around the entire pond, part of, part of that also includes the waterworks complex on Bedford Street, which as we know, Mr. Furlan has completely disregarded the historic value of um, by what he did. So that's really, that's what makes me a little more concerned there. Um, but I, if, if there are historic preservation restrictions in place, then it, it would limit anything that can be done, I guess, negatively to all three. Um, I'm still really, I'm still disappointed and I do feel that uh, Mr. Furlan is being um, disrespectful to the board, knowing that we have asked to speak with him and he is not, um, he's not doing that, so. I, I think it's disrespectful to ask for a letter of support for projects and then not show up to answer the questions that the board has. So that's all I have. Well, I would, um, I, I really 
have experience with what Mike is going through. Uh, so I don't think it's, I would like to support the letter of, of um, support that he needs, because I think in the final analysis, Mike knows that when he gets to CPC, Mr. Fairland will be there. Or, or my, my, CPC will, I don't think we'll go any further than, than what we're doing tonight. Right. I think that that, that uh, needs to be clear. And, uh, uh, you know, that uh, not without saying, but I think that uh, you can't proceed further without the uh, department behind you. So I would be in favor of a letter of support, knowing full well that Mike will move that forward and make it clear to CPC that when that's considered that um, the supervisor will be with him. Is that a motion? Yeah. Is that a motion? I, I will just say I, I do appreciate everything that, that Mike does and has done. And, you know, I have always supported him in the past. And my issue, I just want you all to know my issue was not with um, Mike Labossier or anything that he does because I know that he does things impeccably well. So. Yeah, and the other the other side of the coin is I, I I would hope that the department understands that the life there's a life work here. It's not just a a good idea and a project that's going to be completed from start to finish. It's a life work going on in the reservation and in the interlocking area. So okay. I'm going to make a motion for a letter of support. Okay, for which project are we talking? All three. I'm talking all three. Okay, so I have a motion for a letter of support for all three of the projects. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, so I have a motion and a second roll call vote. Joyce Rogers. Uh, and I will I will just like to interject uh, that uh, appreciate your comments, uh, uh, Ruben, and also Joyce uh, mentioning that for Mike, it's a lifelong project, which it is. You've been with them for 40 years, Mike, and have done a, an honorable job and you are well thought of here. Um, so uh, that that six has gone up <laughs> and and uh, if we're taking a vote, uh, I'm in favor. Okay, so let me do a roll call vote. Joyce Rogers. Yes. Connie Sewell. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveira, I will vote yes as well. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Mike, move on. Thank, thank and, I, good luck. I, I appreciate the endorsement. And Richard, I, I, I don't stop to count those years. That's pretty good of you. It's a lot of years. Um, but I, I, I do agree that um, that these we we we're long overdue, like a hundred years overdue, on some of these on, on acutely looking at some of these deferred maintenance and other issues, and you know we're we're in danger of losing some of them. So it, that's why it's critical. Um, but I I Chris I particularly encourage you to you know stay tuned because I I think that the I you know there are some um, I I think you're closer than not as far as the the you know the the view of um bedford street and that historic you know that historic um situation there and i and i think that's probably you know something that can be resolved uh sooner than later okay so i appreciate it very much i'll sign off now thank you all right thanks mike have a good holiday mike thank you you all as well good luck mike Okay, now, um, I, Connie, do you need to leave? Are you, Connie? I think Connie, I think she's frozen. No, I, I think she's muted. Yeah. No, she's yeah. muted, but I think she's frozen. I think she's yeah, frozen. Well. Oh, she's gone. Oh, okay, be back. She's, Here we go. <laughs> Connie, I, I, do you need to leave? She keeps, she keeps. I uh, have a few more minutes. Can we um, move on the agenda to um, Mike Keene since he's here? Okay. Can you can hear me. 
Okay, yeah, I can hear. So I have a motion to take 6A out of order next, and that is uh, Mike Keene. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion and a second. Roll call, Joyce Rodericks. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Connie Sewell. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveri. yes. So um, Mr. Keene is requesting letters of support for community preservation committee applications for um, for two projects. There is one at 77 Freedom Street, which is on behalf of Charles and Gloria Jacobson, and then uh, 25 Water Street on behalf of Jean and Jim Padilla. And again, um, both of these have come before us in previous years, and they are just, um, they're doing a little bit more on these projects. So the projects are, are being extended. So if, if Mike, you wanna just give us a very brief um, synopsis and then. Sure, I'll, I'll be quick. Thanks Kristen and thanks everyone else for, for having me. And so um, just quickly, the first one is Kristen mentioned is the historic Massasoit number five fire station firehouse. Um, and what we have done previously is we've completed a building study of the building uh, back in December of last year. And we also have a CPA funded project that we have completed the construction documents for, which is the restoration, masonry restoration of the west eleva elevation of the fire station. Um, we are going out to rebid the project this um, this spring, maybe a little sooner than that. We've had some a bit of a tough time trying to get contractors in the the current bidding climate, um, but we're hopeful uh, we're going to cast a, a wider net and try to get some additional contractors um, sort of outside the immediate area that are qualified and historic uh, preservation contractors that we've worked with previously. So this is really. Um, intended to be the third project that we're requesting CPA funding uh, for, and it's the restoration of the hayloft, which is on the south side of the fire station, uh, and it's for mason restoration. Part of the project is mason restoration of the east and um, west and south elevations of that hayloft, which is really like a one and a half story, you know, high structure. Um, we identified some areas of uh, significant masonry deterioration on the east elevation of that hayloft uh, where the roof line meets the masonry and there's water getting in behind that masonry wall. So that in particular is going to require most of the work. It's not a substantial area, but it is something that needs to be addressed um, hopefully soon. So I could go on, but I, that's really that was the project a, in a nutshell. Yeah, Mike, that was the same wall that was in in question in the last uh, bid, correct? A year ago, when you presented, that was the same. I'm wall. sorry, say that. <clears throat> say that again, Rick. I say so, a year ago when this was presented, it, that that same west wall was the wall that was having difficulties. Am I correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it hasn't been... uh, we had, no, it hasn't been addressed. Okay. No, right. that, that has not been yet addressed yet. Okay. So. All right. Well, I, I'm, I know we're, we're trying to get through this quickly. I know Connie's got to go. Uh, uh, and are, are you pretty well set with this, uh, Mike? Because the project is, it appears you're just adding a few other uh, areas. Uh, I don't think there was, uh, were you scrub coating the building last time also? No, no, we weren't doing any scrub coating. That was, that was masonry repointing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so we have bid documents completed that are sort of, you know, sitting on a shelf waiting for, you know, uh, some time in the, in the, after the calendar year, it's a little too early, I think, to bid that project out. That's the West Elevation Restoration. So for, for that project, which is already, as I mentioned, funded, uh, it's um, masonry repointing, uh, some brick replacement, 
gutters and downspouts because there's it, most of those gutters are completely gone anyway, and there's no downspouts that are that are on that west elevation, which is contributing to some of that damage on the west elevation. So this would be you know working to correct that within the, the Secretary of Interior's standards. Okay. Uh, the the building's a nice looking building in it, and you know and it, it 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 does stand. It out. certainly is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you, Kristen, would you like a motion to send um, a letter of support? Yeah, if somebody wants to make a motion and all nobody right. else has any questions, that's yeah, fine. That's, yeah, Connie, you all set? Yeah. Ruben? Yeah, I'm good. Joyce? All set. Okay, then I'll make a motion uh, to support this project. Okay, so I have a motion to support the uh, Massasoit Fire Station. I'll second that. Second, um, okay, roll call vote. Joyce Rodericks. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Connie Soule. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveira, I vote yes as well. Okay. And Thank then uh, next is 25 Water Street, which again has come before us in the past. So, um... So this is another project that has received uh, CPA funding previously. This um, project, we did a study of the building and um, we've completed the study. And I think um, since, you know, having been awarded the funding for, for that study piece of it, um, it's the, the project is this sort of gotten much more interesting and we did submit an application last year to the CPC for um, some work uh, replacement of the, the roof system. And I think that the argument back then, um, for lack of a better word, was that it's not, um, the roof system is not visible to the public, right? So there's no necessarily public benefit uh, for a roof replacement project. And I think that was something that they had recently sort of discussed you know, internally. But what we're proposing now um, is to look at the windows, which are replacement windows that have failed. Um, we've gone back and done some additional documentation. And Kristen, did, it, did you get the um, eligibility application for uh, the CPA? I don't know if, if everyone else has a copy of it, but there's some yeah. historic photos everyone in there. Yeah, there's, there's some historic photos in there of what that building originally looked like. It's a, it's a tremendous difference. Um, there's a photo in there from 1910, which shows the original structure, which is a three and a half story high structure that was destroyed, uh, you know, significant damage in the, the fires, Firestone fire of 1941. And so what we're looking to do for this project is to place the existing uh, failed windows with new windows that would be um, similar to the historic style of what was there based on the, the, the photos that we, we have, which are six over six windows. Um, so, uh, and of course it would just be for the first floor only is what we're looking to do. There's some minor masonry cleaning and there's some notes in there about masonry restoration. That's really at the jams of the, you know, where those windows fit in, um, where we'll be doing some repointing and some brick replacement. There's also some metal that's embedded in those mortar joints that we're looking to remove the metals um, because it's creating some ferrous staining, some metal staining on the masonry. So um, that's all part of, of the, the project. It really, it really was um, pretty amazing to see what it looked like initially, because I am very familiar with the building itself, but to see it when it was in its original three story was was pretty impressive. Um, does anyone? Yeah, have and um, if, I was gonna say, if you don't have a copy of the study that we did, I could certainly send it to you all um, because there's some really interesting stuff that we found. I mean, there is a, you know, even a newsreel from 1941, you know, you think of the old newsreels and there's a flyby of the whole complex that's it's burning. 
um, and some some images of this, you know, this structure in particular. So we were able to dig in and sort of get, you know, a lot of information on the building, which was which was it was kind of fun to do that. I like to see that. Hmm. Yeah, certainly. And the one thing I'll remind everybody too is that the building sits in the um, recently created cultural, uh, the waterfront cultural district. So it's it's in a significant it's in a significant area. It's a state district. So. Well, I'd like to make a motion to approve a letter of support. Okay, so I have a motion for a letter of support for 25 Water Street. Do I have a second? A second. I'll that. second that motion. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Uh, jo roll call vote. Joyce Rogers. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Connie Sewell. Yes. And Kristen Cantara Oliveri. Yes. So the letter is approved. Great. Thank so you very much, you everyone. Thanks, Very Mike. Good. If you can send a copy of the study to me, and I can uh, forward it yeah. to the board, because yeah, we would definitely like to uh, to read up on that. Have yeah. a nice holiday, Mike. You as well. I'm going to do yeah. that now before I leave. It's a it's a link. You know, you'll get a link because it's a yeah. very large file. So you know, if, if you don't see something tonight, then just just drop me a line, and I'll send it to you some other way. Okay. So sounds good. All right. Great. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks. Have a great holiday. Thanks. Happy New Year. Too. Take care. Happy holidays. Bye bye. Uh, I do have to leave, and okay. my um, Wi Fi here is kind of unstable too. I keep getting cut out. Okay, that's fine. We still have a quorum, so we can finish the rest of the meeting. The rest of the meeting is, is just happy holidays. And uh, you too. Okay. Thanks, Connie. Good, good luck in your good luck in your evening endeavor. Yes. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, so would somebody like to make a motion to go back to uh, number 4A, which are the minutes, and we can get back on track? I'll make a motion to go back in order and go to 4, start with A. Okay, so I have a motion to go back in order of the agenda with 4A starting. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second, second that motion. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Roll. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Joyce Rogers. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliver. Yes. Um, so I have uh, the minutes from September 21st, 2021. Would somebody, uh, do, we, do we have any discussion on the minutes? No, I read the minutes and I'll make a motion that we accept them. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second the I'll motion. Second that motion. Okay, motion and a second. Roll call. Joyce Rogers. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliveira vote yes. So minutes approved. Um, next up, we have the minutes from October 19th, 2021. Excuse me. <coughs> Any discussion? No, again, I read the minutes and I would make a motion to accept them. Okay, I have a motion. Oops, sorry, motion to accept the minutes from October 19th, oh, 2021. I'll accept. So I'll second that motion. Okay, motion and a second. Roll call vote, Joyce Roger. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Kristen Cantara Oliver vote yes. Uh, so next up we have the minutes from November 17th, 2021. Um, I I did not, I was not able to get those minutes to you in time. So I need a motion to um, to move those to our next agenda if somebody would like to make a motion. I'll a motion to, to move that to the next meeting. Okay, so I have a motion to move the minutes from uh, November to the next meeting. I'll second that motion. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce Rogers. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. 
Kristen Cantera Oliveira, yes. So the minutes for 11 17 21 will be put on the next agenda. Um, next up, we have notice of intent to demolish structure. Um, so first up, we have 1170 Newhall Street, and that is not on the significant structures list. So I did just send a letter letting them know it is not on the list. Um, then 22 Aberdeen Street, again, was not on the significant structures list. So I sent a letter saying that it was not listed. And uh, same for 5C, which was 83 Essex Street. Um, they were taking down a garage. And again, that property is not listed on the significant structures list. So I sent them a letter stating that it was not on the list. And we already did discuss uh, 45 Anawan Street. Mm -hmm. And then next up would have been uh, Mike Keene and Mike Labasia, which we have discussed already. So moving on old business is the uh, 1620 Waterworks Complex update. And I do not have an update on the complex. As you know, Mr. Furlan did not attend the meeting. He still has not uh, contacted me. And I do not have an update. I know that last I knew is the, uh, the building that they were building is a modern structure with a big blue wave on the front. He did say that they were looking at um, ways to, to uh, use some of the old granite from the property on the building, but I don't know what that entails because I, um, I'm still waiting. I can reach out again and see um, if he'll respond, uh, but that's all I can do at this point. So I know they're working on the property. They're, they're still working up there and they were um, putting in the foundation for the building that they're gonna be putting up. Um, that's all I know. Okay. okay. Uh, the merger of the Historical Commission and the Historic District Commission. I don't have any update from the last meeting. Um, all I know is that Attorney Rumsey did <laughs> send it, um, send the okay to um, Councillor La Liberty to um, set a meeting to discuss the, um, the proposal when I had sent him our recommendations. And so I don't have, I don't have a date yet from Councillor La Liberty. I'm not sure if one has been set because I know the holidays are, are coming up. So as soon as I have that, I will let you know. Um, one or two of us would need to attend that meeting on or to answer some questions. So mm -hmm. um, when that happens, I will let you know. Okay. Uh, let's see, moving on, uh, 8A, date for the 2022 meetings. I know in the Historic District Commission meeting, we did discuss keeping the date at the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. And um, that was the consensus there. Everyone agreed to that. And I just want to make sure that in this commission, we also agree on those dates because um, once the merger happens, I would assume that we will all be attending together. Although I, I can't say what, what their plan is, but um, for now, we still have to have either two separate meetings or joint meetings and it would still be on the same day. So is everybody okay with um, keeping the dates to the third Tuesday? I mean, the third Tuesday of the month. As I'm okay with it. As long, you know, as long as somebody doesn't jump ahead of us, because I think in the past you've had to struggle with that, you know, as Madam Chairman, you've, you know, other people seem to be working the schedules as well. So I think we need to lock that in and make it clear that that is our day. Right. And that's, that's why I want to do this now so that we can send it into the city clerk and lock the dates in. Normally it does. What happens is sometimes we can't get a, uh, a quorum on any given day, especially because the two, the two um, committees are so fractured. We're missing three on one, we're missing two on another. So if we can't get a quorum, then we have to find another meeting 
and then we're working around what everybody else already has scheduled. But if we can lock our meetings in and then we, we can have a quorum, then it's not an issue. But just making sure that um, mm -hmm. I know, Ruben, you were not part of that last conversation. So does that date work for you as well, the third Tuesday of the month? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Rick? You yes, were, yeah, uh, I'm in total okay. agreement. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just send the dates down to Allison and tell her that we're going to, for now, it's going to be booked for the two committees, one at 6, one at 6.30. Um, but the meetings will start at 6. And I think the joint meetings work really well, especially because if we do come together, then at least even if not, everybody can vote in on one or the other. We're all there to, to listen to the conversation and, and be part of the conversation mm -hmm. as well. So. Okay. Um, open discussion. Do we have anything else to discuss? Any anything anybody needs to bring up? No, I I just want to uh, reaffirm <laughs> that uh, yes, I I think we should continue to try and get a meeting with Paul Ferlin and find okay. out what's happening over there on Stonehaven Road and Bedford Street. Okay. Uh, I'm anxious myself to see what the building looks like. Uh, and uh, having his architect present would be would be really good so that we could uh, get some questions answered. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, that that's probably the, the only discussion. <laughs> and I'll end it there. But uh, I, I, I concur with the uh, uh, with the, the, the sadness that is being presented here. Uh, you know, with the inability to speak to the people who are controlling the projects. That's not historic projects, so that's not very comforting. Mm. I agree. Anything else? Anybody else have anything? Okay. Um, that being said, can I have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a second to that motion. Okay, second uh, motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, roll call, Joyce Rodericks. Yes. Richard Mancini. Yes. Ruben Amaral. Yes. Kristen Cantera Oliveri. Yes. Um, so that being said, thank you, everyone. Have a very happy holidays to all of you. Everyone stay safe, stay well, have fun, and um, we will see you all in the new year. Thank you, and the same thank to you. everyone else. Thank you. Take care now. Take have a good night. Everyone. Good night. Alex.